Nu mene pare ce vede inge spere tu sancti. Amen. So our saint for today is Saint Elizabeth of Portugal, and she has quite an interesting uh, story, and her life shows us the importance of holy women and mothers. Uh, she, was, she was born in the year uh, 1271, so we have the 13th century. <clears throat> she was born to the royal family of Aragon in Spain, and her birth put an end to the quarrel between her father and her grandfather. This is kind of important of things to come. Uh, she ended up being a very, uh, a very great peacemaker in her day. Uh, she was a very, uh, very pious as a child. She said the full divine office, uh, fasted and prayed, and attended Mass twice per day. Uh, she was married to King Denis of Portugal in the year 1288. Uh, as queen, uh, there to, in, in, the, in the, um, the, the house of the king, she continued all the pious practices of her youth. And, um, you know, the, the king of Portugal at that time, Dennis, um, he wasn't a very good example of uh, Christian piety. And neither, neither were the, um, the attendants there at court. Uh, so when the queen showed up, his new queen, and she had all these pious practices, it made everyone else... Um, I wouldn't say jealous, it made them envious. Jealousy is when you desire something that somebody else has and you don't have it, but they weren't jealous of her piety, they were envious of her piety. They wanted her not to be pious because it made them look bad. And so she had to endure that. She had to endure the, the um, uh, kind of the, that, that envy and anger of those around the court. You know, people, they hate having their wickedness exposed, which is what a good example does. Somebody comes in and is actually good, and it reveals all of their lies for what they are. That's why the world hates the Catholic Church. Um, that's why the people in the world want the church to change her doctrine, because the unchanging doctrine of the church is a, as a standing testament to the wickedness of the world. Uh, but uh, uh, so uh, St. Elizabeth uh, continued her pious practices regardless of the, um, uh, the, um, the, the, the envy and the anger and so on she was receiving. And even despite the fact that her husband was a, uh, not just his pie, piety wasn't very good, he was actually scandalous. He was vicious in the marriage, not like vicious as in like aggressive, but filled with vice. Um, he had a mistress and, in fact, would end up fathering a child uh, um, with another woman. She didn't get angry. She didn't, um, you know, a, a demand a divorce. She continued her pious practices. She was uh, uh, calm and kind and gentle and simply prayed and fasted for his conversion. And how the king was converted is, is a rather extraordinary story. Uh, St. Elizabeth had a very devoted page, a young boy that would run errands for her. And um, uh, this young, young page was very much of the, uh, the same mind as the queen. He was a very uh, holy and pious young lad. Uh, but another page in the court was very jealous of this one, the queen's favorite page. And so this, this um, uh, evil young man went to the king and accused the queen's page of some, uh, you know, uh, horrible crime. Well, the king, himself being a vicious man, didn't investigate the matter, and furthermore, beyond all proportion, uh, sent word to, I uh, was the keeper of like the fire kiln, that he was going to send him a page, and the, the keeper was supposed to take that page and throw him into the furnace as soon as he arrived. So uh, the king tells the young page, the, the queen's page, go uh, carry this message to the, 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 um, uh, the furnace man there. So the page is on his way, and he passes by a chapel, and he decides he's going to go to mass. Well, he attends Mass, but he was late to Mass. So he decided, you know, I really want to stay through Mass and receive Holy Communion. So he stayed for another full Mass. Meanwhile, uh, the page would accused him was getting impatient and asked the king if he could go see if it had been accomplished. And the king said, yes, you can. So this evil page runs to the furnace. Uh, That's the first page the furnace keeper had seen. He grabs him and throws him into the fire, ending his life. So... Uh, thus the wicked receive their reward, and then when the king heard of what had actually happened, uh, the evildoer had already been punished, uh, the king realized the error of his ways, and he himself uh, converted. 
So a rather miraculous story there of, of uh, um, that young page being saved by his devotion to mass. And uh, it was after the example of St. Elizabeth of Portugal. So uh, uh, King Dennis became very devoted to her afterwards, completely repented of his ways as much as he could, um, and entrusted to her many of the political affairs of the kingdom. Uh, she became his trusted advisor, and, uh, and this was not due to any ambition on her part or nagging, but it was due to her example of quiet piety and uh, virtuous living. She did not demand his trust, but she earned it. Uh, she used her newfound influence to establish monasteries, churches. Uh, she rebuilt shrines and gave alms to the poor. As well, she accompanied the king on many affairs, uh, uh, affairs of state of great importance. Uh, but uh, she was not without her share of domestic heartaches. Um, many women struggle with keeping peace in their families. Uh, any, any woman who's married and has kids, I'm sure, knows this very well. Uh, but St. Elizabeth of Portugal had to deal with a burden that most mothers do not, and that was uh, seeing her son lead an army against her husband. A uh, member of the infidelity early in the marriage, uh, the king had an illegitimate son, and his rightful son, Alfonso, thought that this illegitimate son was receiving too much attention and it was, was receiving, uh, getting too much importance in the kingdom. So he gathered an army and started a civil war against his own father. I mean, imagine the heartache for this mother, seeing her son and her husband going to war against each other. Uh, so there were some skirmishes back and forth, and, and they had drawn up in the lines of battle, and they were prepared to, to go into this pitch battle. How many lives are going to be lost? And it was um, suspected that her son was going to lose his life in this battle. He was ready to fight to the death. Uh, so the queen, this is really where, this is where you see uh, the quiet virtue, that feminine uh, uh, um, strength really come to the front. I mean, people talk about feminism these days and power to, power to women and so on. Listen to this story. What did St. Elizabeth of Portugal do? She was quiet. She was demure. She was, she was not timid, but she was meek. And underneath all of that, what people may have thought was a weak and timid woman, she rode out onto the field of battle, got in between those two armies, and told them to stop. Imagine that. She had such boldness, such courage, and such strength of will that they listened. I mean, imagine. Imagine the queen going out there, being on the sidelines. What are you doing here in the field of battle? Look at all these archers and the horsemen and the knights and the lances and the swords and the armor. What are you doing out here? What do you think they're going to do? Do you think these thousands of, of battle-hardened veterans are going to listen to you, a poor woman? And they did. Because guess what? Virtue is powerful. When we follow uh, uh, the virtuous life God has established for us, when we give ourselves over to God, the God of armies fights for us. And that's what people saw. That's what those men on the battlefield perce perceived, was that in this woman, in this, this, this quiet, uh, uh, virtuous queen, they saw a power greater than both of their armies combined. Right? And they respected it, and, and they deferred to it. And that ended the civil war between her husband and her son. Uh, so uh, what an example uh, right there, you know, and we hear so much these days about um, toxic masculinity and feminism, as I mentioned, and the trouble with feminism is it wants to replace toxic masculinity with toxic femininity. It, it, you know, these women see these men, and okay, maybe, yeah, maybe they're being tyrants, but instead of wanting men to be better men, women want to replace male tyrants with female tyrants. They want to be the ones dominating. That's, that's all that femini feminism is. It's not recognizing evil for what it is. It's saying, hey, you're doing something, you're dominating others, and we want to dominate others too. You can't be the only ones. It's, it's a very, very sick, very twisted way of thinking, but that's what happens when people don't understand virtue, they don't strive for it, they don't accept that there is an objective reality, uh, a moral, natural law that governs uh, mankind, right, established by God. Uh, so anyways, this, this was, um, she succeeded in establishing peace in her household, and eventually her husband died of natural causes. Uh, after this, uh, the, the kingdom went to her son Alfonso, and she retired to a convent of the poor Clares, uh, which in fact she herself had helped to build with, with uh, the, the, the treasury from the, the uh, royal treasury. Uh, so, you know, she was rather advanced in age, in her 60s by this point, and, and living out her life peacefully. Uh, but sadly, 
um, you know, what is it? The work of acquiring peace is anything but peaceful. Uh, once more, she had, was called to settle a dispute. Uh, once more, it was uh, involving a, a battle. And this time, it was her son from marching an army against his son-in-law. I mean, how many times does this have to happen for this poor queen? So, so, she, she, so uh, it's just another dispute. So she has to come out of the convent once again. I don't know if, I don't think she went onto the battlefield, but she had to go talk to her son, talk to her son-in-law, and she managed to resolve the dispute once more on preventing another civil war. Uh, but again, she was 67 years old at this point, and the effort of that, uh, that journey taxed her health such that she grew sick and died shortly thereafter. Um, her feast, she died on July 4th, uh, but that was um, uh, moved to July 5th uh, because of the octave of um, St. Peter and Paul, and then it was moved again, and, and so anyways, it, it ended up being um, today is, is her feast day, although she did die on July 4th. Uh, so, so many lessons for us, right? So many lessons for housewives, right? Uh, married women, uh, to realize how much power you can have in your home in settling disputes if you display virtue. If you have your anger and your resentment and your bitterness under control, then you can, you can use that to quell everybody else's. But that's very difficult. That's very difficult to acquire that, but it, it is a power that will make you the ruler of the house. It's going to be that virtue and that quiet uh, uh, patience. I mean, her husband was unfaithful to her. Infidelity. And she still bore it with virtue. And you can't say that didn't hurt. That absolutely was very painful. Uh, but her virtue saw it through. And, and her uh, quiet suffering and acceptance of that pain is what enabled her uh, to heal her husband of that, uh, that great vice. Um, also, uh, you know, I would say that, that whatever battles you're fighting, right, whatever battles there may be that you're, you're, you're dealing with, if you have the God of armies to fight for you, you will be victorious. Uh, but you have to be on his side first, right? Recall Joshua when he was about to uh, uh, assault the city of Jericho, and he saw an angel of the Lord, and he asked the angel, are you on our side or the enemy's side, Jericho? And the angel said, neither. I'm an angel of the Lord. I am on God's side. And God is on the side of virtue. If you are virtuous, God is on your side. If you start to depart from that and do wickedness, God is not on your side. Uh, so that lets us know how do we overcome the battles in our life? You be on God's side. That is overcoming your stubbornness, our pride, our lusts, our avarice, our greed, or whatever it may be, will be on God's side. Uh, he will fight for us. Uh, it's St. Elizabeth of Portugal uh, and so many other saints give us that example. Uh, so let's ask for her intercession uh, to help us fight our battles. God bless you all in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you for listening. Please remember to click subscribe and to hit the bell for notifications. And in this age of censorship, please consider helping support us at sensefidelium.com. Under the Donate and Support tab, there are plenty of ways to help support the work and to help grow and sustain the efforts of Census Fidelium in general. May God reward you and thank you very much.